Welcome back to the Two Months Podcast presented by Shadified Salon and Barbershop. I'm your host, Joshua Marshall, and my uh, co-host is uh, waiting here in the wing, and uh, we're just going to do a short episode, but we got uh, Sonny Seacon. Sonny, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, just kind of plugging, plugging along hour by hour, my friend. It's uh, just been dealing with some mental health stuff the last uh, probably two weeks, and uh Pretty much the last 10 months, but um, yeah, it's interesting how the mind works at times, and I know you and I have chatted about it before, but uh, definitely uh, trying to find ways to create better days in my life, so um, you know, having good people helps that out, but uh, yeah, just continue conversations and trying to, trying to keep, put one foot in front of the other. Well, I think, you know... I- I know you probably don't want me to respond to it, but I'm going to like, you know, kudos to you again for being open with it. You know, that helps people in and itself. Um, and I think, you know, I'm not an expert, uh, you know, what do I know? But uh, I think uh, at times we've all had challenges and I think your approach is just spot on minute by minute, hour by hour. And just, you know, you're, you're getting after it. And I, you've said something before that I, I think people need to know. It's like, you know, mental illness is looked at in a, in a way that's different than like, if you told me you're trying to rehab a torn ACL and, you know, I never quite got that right. Like yeah. uh, one is more celebrated as like, Oh, he's a warrior. He got hurt. And uh, the other, it's just like, maybe it's not understood or uh, really grasped by people. Maybe people are uncomfortable in how they support that journey, but it is a journey and you're just trying to get, trying to get back and and you will. And like I said, as you said, you've got your friends and your support system and we're here and, you know, I know you get through it and it'll be day by day. Yeah. Yeah. I saw like a video. It's like, am I okay? No. Am I going to be better? Am I going to be, am I going to get through it? Hell yeah. So, you know, I saw that video on Instagram and, and yeah, like inside and outside, like it looks like I'm okay. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, like, you know, now I got the two months podcast, uh, Lincoln navigator all wrapped in the two months podcast gear. So, uh, <laughs> I'm so driving around the city with my Lincoln navigator and the decals and everything's all over it. And, you know, it's kind of cool today. I was around the highlands area and I was kind of trying to punch in an address. So I just pulled, obviously you don't want to text and drive. So you pull off the side of the road and, and then, uh, I, I got, ran into an old friend, a ball hockey friend. And, and then, um, Went to the doctor's office later on and ran into Blake Bluon, uh, ball hockey goalie. So it was like kind of cool just running into some like random friends. And yeah, I saw Jordan earlier around the Highlands area. He was, he's a firefighter and he, um, yeah. So he was just finishing a golf, uh, a round of golf with some of some firemen that he goes, goes with. And, you know, and then you do these podcasts, they're very helpful. Um, you know, and like also to it kind of like, there's another thing is like, if you're really going through something and you're really challenging, the best way to get through it is like help someone else because you can't be there to help you right now. But if you can help someone else, that's like therapy in its own different way, you know, cause I can't help me right now. So I'm going to help you. So, uh, you know, we got some events coming up. Um, you know, uh, Clay Vanderham is a co-host of ours. Um, he, he's got two kids and they play minor hockey um so one place for sierra the other place for emlac so we're gonna go to the morning skate for the flames others on sunday and you and banner are more than welcome to join us on that sunday morning if you want sunny yeah. so uh, if you want to bring your wife too um but yeah you guys are more than welcome to to come we're gonna go um the morning skate and see the oilers practice the flames practice and chatted with Tyson Barry and he's going to come by and say hi to the kids and maybe Michael Backlund, Sam Honzik, some guys from the flames. And we're going to see if uh, maybe like Ty Emerson will come from the Oilers or, you know, let's see how that goes. But um, yeah, it's those kind of things in life kind of like help get through some bad days, but um, I'm not going to lie. Obviously yeah, my dad killed himself to mental health. Like he took his own life and, you know, I was kind of talking to someone the other day about adversity and kids being resilient. Like I was resilient because, you know, my parents, yeah, they were separated. That didn't put me in a position where I'm here now. It's, you know, the the struggle was losing my dad to mental health and finding him. So, you know, and that triggered a lot of other things and yeah, I lost 
lost someone I was dating for a while there and it's kind of kind of hard to move on from that and trying to but mind bus uh my therapist there trying to she's helping me get through things and then you know got people like you and you know a couple other friends that called me today just random calls and check-ins so you know there are people there that do care but yeah I'm not gonna lie there's times I've, I've thought of taking my own life and you know it's a uh, a tough one and you know i there's people that are going to be listening to this that might be in the same situation or have been in the same situation it's a dark place when you think of it um you know i think uh yeah it was like last december right this next room right where i record the podcast i was you know to open up more about it i didn't think we're going to get down this road and we'll get to our, our our announcements in a second here but uh yeah, I hung myself in my basement in December and I uh, was ready to go. And I, uh, you know, I got saved by two female police officers that came in and, you know, said what I was going to do. And they ended up tracking me and with my phone and everything and came to my residence and broke through and came in and took me to the hospital. So, you know, that's, uh, and then, yeah, these past few weeks kind of been pretty dark, but uh, just trying to move forward and, you know, I don't think it, I think it's wrong when someone messes with someone else's head. You know, when you tell someone, you know, how much you care about them and then you just up and leave and then maybe you come back in their life, you know, six, seven months, 10 months later and you say the same thing, but then you don't change nothing. You just say the same thing and kind of come up with maybe excuses or not. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's people's lives, man. You don't mess with their mess with them. So, um, you know, I, I think we uh you know all try to need to understand that in life and and then uh you know try to move forward and and help each other like i said at the end of our last episode like maybe even stay, instead of saying how are you doing to someone maybe ask them you know uh who did you help today you know maybe try to help some one person in front of you today and maybe that'll change the perspective of your life so i uh try to use that mo- that mantra and and motivation going forward to try to live a better life but um yeah i thought that episode that we did the five generations of south asian hockey was a pretty big success sonny and i know you said you got some feedback and you know the downloads to that were were quite quite remarkable um maybe just give a quick uh, a quick thought on that i know I mean, it's a tough transition what i just said i don't know well, I mean, a lot on the other thing but uh i think you we, said it good yeah before the transition like you know first off heartbreaks that you put yourself uh, or you found yourself in a situation like that. Obviously, you know, I'm here anytime you need to, to talk. Uh, you've got, you've had amazing guests. You've got a circle of friends, you know, um, anything you need from us, you know, we're there. And uh, in this, in these journeys, like with yourself or anyone that's facing these, like it takes a village and, you know, again, I'm not an expert, but I, I will disagree with you on camera here that you know i i love the idea of you uh you wanting to help others uh and that's a form of therapy but i you know i always believe that like you know that it's their the classic airline uh mask scenario right like they teach you to put it on yourself first before you put it on like your son because if you don't take care of yourself you're not in a position to take care of the ones that you love so you know, I don't think you you don't owe it to anybody. Your life experiences are yours, and you've experienced thing, things that you know most would never wish on anyone. Mm-hmm. But you're here, you're you're getting through it, and you are making a big difference in all these kids' lives in doing things like you just said. So, like like I said, we're here. Um, stay on your journey. Stay strong. Um, you know, and, and better days are there, right? Like, and that's probably the hardest thing is realizing like when you're feeling low, like that you've made an impact on someone. So just try to keep that in focus, but yeah. um, To the South Asian night, obviously I am passionate about uh, growing the game, changing the game, making the game uh, more inclusive. So that was very cool. Like, you know, it's uh, I'm getting to an age where um, I've seen a lot of change in the game, but I'm still seeing things that I don't like. And, you know, having that discussion with damp who's almost 50 i'm almost 40 and then the youngest at 16 it's like just a reminder that yeah let's celebrate the wins and the progress but let's call a spade a spade if everyone 
if people think that we're at a level that we need to be in terms of equity, diversity, and inclusion in the game, then you're just, you're not looking hard enough. And uh, at, sooner or later, that's going to become part of the problem. Like, um, you know, it's looking the other way or not acknowledging that better things can be done is not helping anything. And I always circle it back to like, uh, as a league, um, you know, you live and die by your revenue, right? Um, you know, we talked about salaries, McDavid at 14 million, Shesterkin did 11 and a half today, but you know, I, you look at the MLB, like Shohei Otani is a $700 million contract, right? At the time of the deal, he, a single player was more worth more than the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes franchise. Yeah. And I said last time that I, I think it's a far stretch to think that the NHL could become the, the MLB, but you know, you don't know, we don't know what it looks like 20 years down the road, right? Like, um, you know, right now it sounds like expansion is the topic of the day. You go from 32 to 34 to 36 and you'll add a billion dollars times what's that for in franchise fees. So that's one way, or, uh, you know, you could really look to manufacture something that is truly appealing to a global audience. Right. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? It's, it starts by acknowledging that more can be done to bring new faces, newcomers, uh, and new fans into the game. But anyways, that's overall, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was very positive. Um, you know, I thought it was awesome to see like damp and you know, again, he's older than me, but to see how like the amount of pride he had, uh, in his daughter, um, you know, being an athlete and being there, it, there was a lot of really cool stuff from it and, you know, getting to celebrate what they're doing with their South Asian summits. Uh, and th again, that's what you need. You need guys that are invested uh, in their communities and getting their communities into the game and helping them navigate a space that, again, is still a little bit foreign. But anyways, we, uh, you know, we talked a lot about a lot of that stuff. We we're, were I think the intention when you texted me today I was like oh this is gonna be a fun quick one I want to be part of it but yeah uh, not to take anything away from the important topics we touched on because they are important and again I give you a lot of credit for being so open and vulnerable because people will hear it and people need to hear it and know that it's okay right yeah no for sure the conversation is uh, can definitely be there for you know um, you know change in the world in that aspect of. Uh, we obviously saw Jessica Campbell make it official tonight behind the bench in Seattle of uh, being the first female assistant coach, um, you know, making it to to the National Hockey League. Obviously, she was in the American Hockey League the last few years with that same staff with Dan Bosma, Disco Dan, as they like to call him. But uh, so kind of kind of cool to see him back in the NHL and also seeing the opportunity she gets. And she's there because she knows the game. So I know it was a three, two loss for the Kraken. They were pretty much dominant for the first 30 minutes of that game in the St. Louis blues, Philip Broberg, um, tough one there, but he ended up scoring a goal for the blues. So, uh, Who's that? yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think you have his Jersey. Too. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know what you have to do with that. Maybe you have to get it signed and, uh, get it, uh, maybe to an auction or a charity or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens there in, in terms of, um, you know, obviously and then Florida Panthers raised the banner tonight and a very convincing win against the Boston Bruins who looked lots, very slow. Um, so it was weird to see the Bruins look that slow. So especially at game one and Utah, it's buzzing. They're two nothing right now in the middle, middle of the third period as we're recording. So, uh, so the games have gotten going and the, the big things are starting tomorrow night. We usually do our prediction show at this time of the year, um, but uh, we're not going to, we're going to do that, but we're just going to announce all our picks on Twitter and Instagram. So we're not going to go in too much into that tonight. Uh, we did, uh, we did do an announcement for some tickets. Uh, we had uh, SeatGeek, who's a sponsor with us. Uh, we're, they're back again. So uh, use the promo code two months pod. That's two months pod at SeatGeek.com to get $20 off your purchase. Um, you'll see that they sponsor the, the Utah hockey club, their, uh, their logos all over their arena right now. So, you know, if you guys want to go to any sporting events or any concerts, uh, use that promo code two months pod and you'll get $20 off your purchase. Um, so thanks to them. And, uh, we, we rolled out a, a contest, Sonny, and, uh, went, we went through it and, uh, some of our sponsors helped us out too, but, uh, we didn't have the, the winners that we kind of wanted and the winners that we did have, 
Uh, they wanted to kind of keep their names confidential. So normally we'd announce their winners, but we've already been in touch with everyone that's won. But the thing is we wanted to have 32 winners. We only had nine winners. Um, so we have a few, um, a few that are going to go into November, but we still have some opportunities to win. So just keep an eye on our social media channels for that. We'll have some announcements in the next uh, week to two weeks on that. Uh, we wanted to get everyone at some uh, home openers, but um, yeah, there's a lot of teams that, uh, that, that weren't even picked. So I guess we, if we have a niche in Toronto, we have a niche in Calgary. We have a niche obviously here in Edmonton. So we had uh, multiple win multiple people picking those teams. So uh, just talking to SeatGeek and some of our other uh, contributors, we're going to try to work something out, but uh, we did have a nine winners and those nine winners are, uh, are going to be able to go to the games, but it'll be all in the Canadian cities. And then there'll be a few in the U S too. I think we had a winner in Tampa Bay and I think we had a winner in Seattle, if I remember correctly, but, uh, but yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. So keep an eye on that channel. Normally in the, in the past, we've announced the winners on here and, and whatnot, but uh, just talking to the people that won, they just said, you know what, it's all good. I don't need to, my name to be on the pod and, whatnot so not everyone felt that way i think it was like five out of the nine did so it's like the rest of them i'll just you know keep it the same but um so yeah just keep 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 an eye on our social media channels we're gonna have some kind of announcement to to make that do i you know maybe there'll be some extra oiler games just because we have a lot of oiler fans and flames fans jets fans too and and lee fans so probably work something out with seat geek on that but um yeah anyways appreciate that so they're back with us. And then uh, we also have uh, Sheena Boychuk, uh, Sheena Boychuk Real Estate, uh, Realty by Design, your design approach to real estate is uh, Sheena Boychuk. She was with us last season and we're going to continue that going forward this year. So if you guys are looking at, uh, you know, buying a home or selling your house, uh, give Sheena Boychuk a call and, or you guys can check her website out at SheenaBoychuk.com and let her know that the Two Months Podcast sent you. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, kind of seeing that grow for her. It's a little hobby that she's uh, gained into uh, that is that is very successful now. So it's something that she uh, was uh, getting into and it's a, a lot more fun for her now. And I think it was always fun for her. It was just trying to, you know, find that right time, but she's, uh, she's done a great job. She sold quite a few houses and uh, but yeah, look, look forward to, uh, to having that back with us too. And then obviously, obviously manscaped uh two months pod um check them out uh for our promo promo code you get uh, 20 dollars off your purchase there so trying to announce some sponsors here sunny and i know you work at henry singer i'm not saying they sponsor us but uh you know someone wants to get a nice suit or get into the get into the fashion game and look really good what are the ways to go i know you have your sunny in, you have two accounts on Instagram, so there's one that's just for uh, Henry Singer. But uh, can you plug that account if someone wants to reach out to you? And uh, yeah, 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 I mean, like I've got my personal yeah. and my work one. I mean, people can reach out to me on either. Uh, one's public, one's private. But yeah, Sunny dot Henry Singer 1938. We're in the new flagship in Stantec in the Ice District. Uh, I've been with the company a long time um really long time and yeah. back now in a full-time capacity again and yeah um you know we are a premium shop we, we definitely know that um but you know we'll take care of you and um you know we we're uh obviously we want we want you walking out of the store with good stuff but you know one thing i will i tell everyone is i i have no issue with you walking out with nothing if it's not the right thing or we don't like how it fits um yeah worth checking us out for sure but um, appreciate you bringing us up, Josh. Um, I think, you know, we're on, I think you and I should, should maybe do our predictions. Yeah, I guess we could, I guess we're on here, but yeah. So let's just run through the promos again, just real quick here. Um, uh, so CDN hats, uh, use promo code two months. That's, uh, two months to get 15% off your CDN hat. Uh, so thanks to them. They're out in Calgary. Now they used to be out based in Kelowna, but they moved out to Calgary um manscaped use promo code two months to get 20 percent off your order that's manscaped.com and uh, as they say the hashtag is your balls will thank you so uh i know uh vernon fiddler and uh, the guys out in dallas are uh, enjoying that so we set uh set up dallas and some of the players there with uh some seat geek stuff um and then yeah uh seek uh or some uh manscaped stuff and then seat geek two months pod that's two months pod you get 20 percent or 20 dollars off your purchase 
Um, so yeah, looking forward to kind of, uh, those sponsors and obviously Sheena Boychuk, check her out at SheenaBoychuk.com. Just tell her the two months podcast sent you and uh, she'll take care of you and anything that you guys are looking for real estate. And as Sonny said for Henry Singer, but um, yeah, predictions. Um, let's uh, let, let's kind of go through it here. Uh, do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first? Uh, let me go first. Cause okay. Okay. Uh, so earlier in the day, Josh, uh, you know, messaged the too much chat for the predictions. So we did it by division wild card, obviously. And then who, the, who we thought the final four would be. And then the cup winners, um, I think probably to no surprise to anyone. Uh, I have Edmonton going a long ways, but I'll break it down. So in the Pacific, I do think that this is a year, the, the Oilers, you know, fresh off a, a, a way loss in the biggest game. I think they more than ever know the value of home ice so I think that they're going to do whatever they can to get that. And I think they have, you know, there's question marks for sure, but I think they have the experience. The organization knows what it takes. I think they can win that division. I have Vegas taking second and Vancouver rounding out the top three. Um, in the central, I have, you know, Dallas, from what I saw, I think they're like largely an unchanged team. Uh, Pavelski retired, obviously uh, that, that, Hurts, but you know maybe more ice time for uh, you know, Wyatt Johnson and some of the younger guys. So I have them taking the Central, Colorado in second, and uh, Nashville rounding out the top three. And Colorado looks strong; they could take one. Dallas could go to two. The wild cards, I you know I struggled, and I there's a lot of variables. LA, if they if Kumper has a bounce back year, depending on how long Doughty's out, but I have. I don't have them making it. I have Minnesota. Uh, Boldy, I think, will take another step forward. Kaprizov is going to be strong. Fleury's in his final year. Um, so, you know, I think it'd be a cool story. And I actually think Utah, um, the new fan base, they're uh, they're showing strong. They have an owner that has the means to bring players in. Uh, I think Keller is a really, really good player, and it's no secret anymore. Uh, so then moving over to the East, uh, Atlantic and, uh, I know they got pumped tonight, but you know, there's a lot of noise coming into the, uh, out of camp with what was going on with Swayman, but I have, I have the Bruins winning the Atlantic. Um, but honestly, this division, it's the best think, division in hockey right now. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, well, I think the top three are like pretty clear, um, and any of them could win it, but I have the Bruins, I have the Leafs going too, and then Panthers, taking uh, the third okay. the metropolitan i've got the rangers taking first uh the devils second you know i think the devils are going to be a much better team with markstrom and keep coaching them um but i just you know the rangers they're uh they're a dangerous team i have the canes rounding out the top three there and then my wildcard teams in the east are the lightning and uh i'm gonna go with the ottawa senators I think, and again, what do I know? This is all such a crapshoot, but that's what makes it fun. Yeah, exactly. my, my conference finals, uh, Edmonton Oilers, uh, the conference fi finals in the West, the Oilers versus the Predators. In the East, I'm going um, Rangers versus uh, the Canes. I don't even know if that makes sense based on what I ranked them. And then the winner, the... Uh, the Oilers after heartbreaks in three or four straight years. I think this is the year that they, uh, they, they finish it. Yeah. So the Ranger, so you had the Rangers and the Canes in the conference final. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know unless it's like one of them's a wild card. I think that's how it would break down if they got there. But uh, typically I think it's uh, Atlantic versus Metro is kind of the way I'll break out. But uh Stranger things have happened in the National Hockey League, so let's just say that. So, but um, okay, I'll start with the Atlantic. So I have the Panthers in first. I got the Leafs in second. And I got the the Lightning in the third position. The two, I do think five teams out of this division make it, and I do think it'll be Boston. And I want to say it's tough. Like I, I like I, I, like Detroit's got to make a jump. I just don't think Ottawa's ready yet. I don't think Montreal's ready yet. So I have. Um, those those teams there so that'll be five teams out of that 
division. Out of the Metro, I have the Devils, the Rangers, and then I have the Penguins kind of bouncing back here. Um, you know, tough there on Mitch Love. He's our boy in Washington, but uh, I just, you know, don't know if they have the the means to kind of push through there. And then uh, the Central, I got the Predators winning the Central, and I got the Utah Hockey Club in second. And then I have the Avalanche in third, and then I got the Jets, and then I got the Stars. So um, I do have the Stars as a wild card team, but you know that's probably going to change. Like it is, it, it that's a good division still too. But um, you know, and it's weird because as I say, like I, I just I'm bullish on maybe you know, the direction that the stars are going. And I think Pavelski, that loss is going to be pivotal to them. So I, I think, so I think they're going to have a bit of a slower, a slower start, but in, in terms of that, but Hey, I could be wrong. Um, and then, yeah, out of uh, the Pacific, uh, Pacific division, I have the Oilers winning it. And then I have the Canucks and then I have the golden Knights. So uh, in that, and then in the conference final, I do have, Dallas and Edmonton in the conference final out west and the conference final out east. I have the Leafs and I have the Devils and then I have the Devils versus the Oilers in the cup final and I have Sheldon Keith winning the Stanley Cup with the New Jersey Devils. So I got the Devils winning the cup. Um, I um, I think they're going to be good. They're going to have some tough decisions on the back end once they get some guys healthy, but uh, Kovacevic is a really good defenseman. Uh, Seamus Casey, another good defenseman. And then they got Pesci too. And they're just, they're loaded on the back end. And I think that's their biggest strength is, is the back end. And, you know, Markstrom playing out East and kind of being able to sleep in his own bed for most of the nights. And, you know, look at the long travel he had with Vancouver, the long travel he had with the Calgary Flames. The guy's a good goaltender when he stays healthy. So we'll, uh, we'll see there. And then, uh, yeah, I got the Oilers losing it again, but uh, they could honestly win it. The only thing that with the Oilers, like, We'll get into this like a little bit, a little bit here before we go, because I don't want to go too, too much longer. But um, the sluggish start that the others had, there was a message sent with Skinner going down the third line, back to the second line. Um, you know, obviously they, they there was indications that they weren't going to go right into LTIR, and a lot of teams don't typically like to do that right off the go, but they did that with with Kane. Um, wh- were you at with their back end? Like, is it is it something? You know, like. The good thing with I like with with Chris Knobloch, anywhere he's been, he never has slow starts. It's all his team starts off pretty flying flying out of the gate. So if there is a slow start with the Oilers in this first month of October, you know how um how, like how concerned would you be as an Oilers fan, Sonny, in terms of maybe getting an upgrade on the on a top four defenseman? I don't think there's going to be much to worry about. They are. Officially today, um, you know, Jeff Merrick, I think, tweeted out that, uh, you know, they are the oldest team in the National Hockey League, just over 30, 30 years old by average. They So they lost a lot of speed in McLeod, Holloway, and, Bro, and Broberg, and, and McLeod, and, and Fogel, and a lot of these guys, um, they don't they didn't get quicker, that's for sure. They got slower. Um, were, were, are you concerned at all with the sluggish preseason start? And you yeah. know, pretty good opponents coming up here, too, to start the season. No, like preseason is uh, – the concerns I would get in preseason are like, okay, organizationally we probably need more depth because we're losing like our guys that are competing for, uh, you know, rounding out the roster, the 12th and 13th or the 7th and 8th are getting beaten by their counterparts. And then prospects that are, you know, probably not playing on either of the teams, we're getting beaten by them. So, you know, two years down the road – it gives me a concern. You know, I also don't see them playing uh, the games that I did watch um, the way that they would in uh, a regular season and a and a, definitely a playoff game. But, I mean, at the end of the day, a loss is a loss. Um, the defense, does it concern me? Um, yeah, I think any time you, you lose two players that you thought were going to play – key minutes in Broberg and then CC, um, you know, it's, it's, it can be concerning. Uh, I think they have a real rock solid one, two pairing. I think Bouchard will continue. 
I mean, offensively, I don't know how much more we should expect, but I think what we'll see out of him is a maturity in the defensive side and what he can do there. I think Darnell Nurse can have a, a bounce back here. Um, you know, he gets a, a ton of flack because of the the money he the monies he earned earned. Um I look for him to step up. I like Kulak, uh Stetcher, but yeah, I mean I'm not giving him a ton of runway if I'm making the call, yeah. but I give the guy I give these guys these new guys every opportunity to 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 do their to do their jobs, but at the same time, they're in win now mode. Uh, you mentioned Skinner being dropped to the third line. That could be just sending a message too, right? Like they're they don't want anything other than going back and finishing the job. And so I think you'll see a lot of that. It's just there's gonna be no passengers. You earn what you get. Um again, I I I think if it was me and those guys are much smarter than me, I think when you know what we know about this roster and who might be available as a second pairing right hand D I was a little bit surprised they didn't try to address it before the season, but you know, we don't know, like maybe Emerson plays really well. And then maybe the four or 5 million bucks you were going to trade to fill that hole. Now, once you get to the deadline can be allocated to something else, right? Like yeah. um, this is a, vet- they're not just veterans on the ice. They're veterans in the back office um and they added like the the linchpin that holds it all together uh he's got a couple cups so he knows he knows a thing or two about he's got putting three, it yeah yeah so I'm, again like as a, as a diehard fan of the oilers like i'm worried every every game because i want them to win but no like as a whole no i'm not i'm not uh i'm not overly concerned um so we'll see we'll see yeah yeah, just hearing of some from some people around the National Hockey League, they think the Oilers are uh, an injury on the way on the back end and an injury up front from not making the playoffs. So it's kind of interesting that you would have people that are much closer to the game than I am. And in terms of some conversations with them, they're like, "Yeah, if, if Ekholm or Bouchard gets hurt, they're they're done. And if you know Drysdale or McDavid gets hurt, they're done." And they're like, "These guys are always healthy, you know." It, you know, it's I like, don't know. I don't know. Like, I I don't I don't necessarily buy that argument, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, if like, God forbid you, one of the big guys goes down and the ULTI are, um, you know, you, you also just got 14 million in cap space that you have GMs that are going to work around. And McDavid has been hurt, not for long stints before, but you know, Leon got a heart trophy because they stepped up and I yeah. think you would see that maturity. Like, would they, for me, if they lost one of those big guns, are they going to finish the, into the first? Probably not. But I think they have enough to get into the playoffs. Um, same on the back end. Like, I think you probably see a bit, things happen quicker. If one of those top three defensemen went down, I think that would force a trade to to bring in reinforcements. Um, but, you know, I was listening the other day, like the cap is, and why did they LTR Kane now versus two days ago like yeah. maybe there's maybe there's a trade coming maybe a player they thought wasn't available suddenly is right like the cap that's a day by day hour by hour changing thing that i i will never understand but there are people that do understand it so yeah i don't know i think the same people that might have said that in the media that they're an injury or two away also probably picked them to win the cup like this is the most oh they all are yeah like they, i've ever they, seen like them. Like every almost every media outlet took it. Like Elliot Friedman even got mad. He was on a Bob Stoffer show and he's just like, Man, like why why didn't the producer say it? You know, someone's gotta pick something else, you know? <laughs> like everyone yeah. like all TSN did and all Sportsnet and all ESPN and all TNT. It was Oilers unanimous, like running away with it, pres- yeah. president's trophy and and all that. So uh like so yeah, yeah it'll be I think I think it's good in a way because they're quote unquote going into the season with some quote unquote adversity in terms of what their back end is going to look like and they're going to get better as the year goes on so that's probably holding to be a good thing because look at like Boston when they had that amazing season there was no adversity at all once they got to the playoffs there was adversity and then they lost right so it's like the others are going to kind of face that because they're going to get everyone's best every single night 
and they're not going to win every single night, but on most nights they're going to dominate and dominate in a big way because they're, they're going to have the best PK again, and they're going to have the best power play again. When you have both of those, you're at least a weapon. Like, sure. like and then, yeah. like to wrap that up too, like I don't, I always find that argument just like so like moot and hilarious. Like, yeah, okay, so McDavid goes down. Is your team going to suffer? Sure. Okay, are the Leafs going to make the playoffs if Matthews is sidelined? Like, yeah. or are the Colorado Avalanche going to make the playoffs if uh, if McKinnon is out? Like, it's just like such a, to me, it's like such an irrelevant thing. Like, any team that loses their best player is going yeah. to be better. <laughs> uh, worse, sorry. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean. And it gives other guys this opportunity to stand, stand up, right? Like Drysaddle did, so. But um, you could see Drysdale having a better year than McDavid, you know, like he can, there's yeah. some, probably some motivation, you know, like Connor's kind of ran with it a little bit here. And if anyone watched that Amazon series, like, you know, he's like on certain nights, I think I'm the best player. And then, yeah, there's nights that he's hands down the best player. So like there's some in, in competitiveness there with both those guys where um, that goes, I just hope like, I, I, I don't like seeing how, soon as they face adversity, they go dry subtle McDavid together. That it's just like, I don't, it, it doesn't build your team up at all. And like, and they were, they were doing that in the preseason, like the way they're going to win a cup, the way they're going to dominate is those guys on separate lines. And more than ever now, they both have adequate wingers that they can do that in this top six role. Like Skinner and Harvardson could run with dry set all year long. And Hyman and Nuge can run with McDavid all year long. You know, like it's it's for sure. And then we, and then like our third line, like you got Connor Brown, Adam Henrique, and you know yeah. Jan Mark there right now. Like yeah. that's a strong, both like the so your three C and your three R could be a top six addition to. I, and yeah, I'm the same as you. I I I I think that in a perfect scenario, they're on separate lines. But like, I was talking to someone and they're like, yeah, but like. They're probably trying it because you know what you're you're gonna get when you go supernova with Drysaddle, Hyman, and McDavid. But he's like, imagine if Nuge was a Nuge Skinner and Arvidsson yeah. could produce at you know an above average second. Like now, all of a sudden, you're like that. Just gives the Oilers another dimension, right? Like we know that because we know what Drysaddle and McDavid can do together. Sure. You know, but I would just be like, and if Drysdale wants to be in the MVP conversation, he needs to drive his own line. And I would assume he probably still like. I know the biggest thing is the Stanley Cups. They guys don't care for these individual trophies anymore. But you know, I think with a lethal team the way they can, you want to separate have those guys separated as much as you possibly can throughout the year. And you know, maybe, sure. and it, and I think it will put Hyman in a really good position to make Team Canada. You know, and yeah, for sure, for sure, four nations face off, right? So, but I think we went longer than we were originally anticipating. So, uh, is there anything else you want to add before we sign out here? Um, just that uh, I wanted to poke a fatal flaw in your Jersey beating Edmonton, uh, comment. <laughs> Markstrom still has to beat the Oilers. That's he's going to exercise the demon. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, it's exactly. And a very hypothetical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, everyone, take care. Um, yeah, enjoy the the next uh, this week. It's opening weekend in the National Hockey League, so enjoy it. There'll be a lot of fun uh, fun nights uh, as we go. And uh, good luck to all our uh, friends of the podcast that have been on with us, and they're gonna continue, uh, you know, their NHL journey. So uh, obviously, them and hey, kudos to Ray Ferraro who did a game in Seattle this afternoon and then flew to utah to do another game tonight so what an amazing that guy is he's a friend of the pod he's been on with us before but uh yeah they're just showing the footage as i'm trying to let everyone know <laughs> just a quick stop to do makeup and right down to the in between the glasses so uh kudos to ray who did two national hockey league games today um he is the warrior of the day it's uh i, I know he wouldn't like the credit because it's just a, an amazing job he has but uh we get the best uh, hockey analysts for uh, two out of the three games and opening day uh, in North America. It's pretty cool to see. So everyone take care, have fun and uh, yeah, be kind to anyone you meet and everyone you meet. Enjoy life. It's uh, short and it's precious. So have a good one, everyone.